Hey everybody, it's Atlas again from Nexus Core, and uh, today I'm going to be giving you a Blade Wing deck profile. So for those of you who don't know, uh, overseas in Japan, uh, a guy uh, topped with a, a deck that utilized Blade Wing Sullivan and Wear Tiger Jaeger, which was like a special stride fodder that allowed him to uh, have a really strong first stride turn with Soulless Demagogue. And we don't have Wear Tiger Yater yet, but I started fooling around with a lot of the cards and it's it's really good. So uh, why don't we, I'll just take you through it. So starting we have four copies of Bladewing Sullivan. So his skill is uh, when you ride him, you can pick a rear guard and search for up to three copies of that card and put them into your soul. So uh, this is really good in that you can get a free soul charge just from writing, um, and you can get a controlled one. So if you're smart and you have uh, Enigmatic Assassin, Bladewing Sykes, or Dimension Creeper already on the field, when you play him, you can then get more copies of that card in your soul where you want them. Um, his other skill is uh, when you have 15 or more cards in soul, all of your guardians get plus 10k shield, and then after each battle, you soul blast two. So that works until you dip under 15 cards in your soul. Um, this allows you to filter your soul. So if you soul charge a bunch of triggers and you have like a 20 card soul and you start putting those in the drop zone, you can then put them back in with your stride. Um, this is just a really good card to be on most of the time. Um, so the Japanese build ran only four of him and nothing else, but uh, I, because we don't have Wear Tiger Yager yet, have also been running two Bladewing Ragey. So the original one. Um, his skill is also like Sullivan. When you ride him, pick a rear guard and put other copies of it in soul. And then his other skill is if you have 15 or more in soul during your turn, he gets critical plus two. So that you're probably not going to be using him for the skill. It's mostly just for the blade wing name. Um, I don't run the restander guy because he's terrible. Uh, my main problem is you can't use the new Reiji with strides, even though you should be able to. Like attack with the stride, then counter blast you know, discard three and then rewrite it from soul. That would be really cool, but unfortunately, uh, Boucherode is a giant cock block, so two of him instead. Um, four copies of Bladewing Sykes. So, his skill is when he's called, if you have a Bladewing Vanguard, you can soul charge one, and then his other skill is when he's in soul, you can put him in drop zone and soul charge two. So he's like Dimension Creeper, except he's got, you know, some merit from being called from hand. Um, it's important for the deck's engine to run four of him. Um, four copies of Tragic Claw. So her skill is uh, when you call something in the same column as her, you can soul charge. So uh, and it works on Vanguard or Rearguard, and it is not GB restricted. So that means when you ride on top of her, you can soul charge. It's like Dorant. Uh, if you call behind her, you can soul charge. If you call on top of her, you can soul charge. She's pretty much just good. And a, a lot of your cards involve something that are just on call. So many times you will call things just behind her and you'll just get soul charges for it. Um, she's incredibly free. And then on top of that, her she's got a darkness skill. So darkness is when something's been put in soul, you are in darkness for the turn. Uh, GB1, uh, when a unit is placed in the same column, if you, I, you have 10 or more uh, things in soul, she gets boost. And if it's 15 or more, she gets plus 2k, so this means that you can have a handful of jank and she, be, she can be a booster. Um, so she's a very flexible card, which is, yeah, runner at four. You can also run Demented Executioner, but I think I'm liking her better. Um, three copies of Flying Librarian, so she's a promo. Uh, GB1, when she's called, you can Counter Blast 1, Soul Charge 2. If you have six or more cards after doing that, you draw a card. And then if you have ten or more cards after doing that, you want to flip a damage. So... She's free as hell. Uh, she makes the Demagog turn even stronger. Um, and she. I think this is just a, a card that a lot of Dark Irregulars decks are, is going to have, are going to have to run for a long time just because of how flexible she is. Um, great ones, we have four copies of Dimension Creeper. So when he's in Soul, you can put him into Drop Zone and Soul Charge 2. So this is again, keeps your engine going. Uh, it's a very, it's like probably the best first turn ride in the game. Probably not, but it, it's in the top 10 for sure. Let's see, four copies of Succubus of Pure Love. So this deck likes to stride, and uh, Wear Tiger Jaeger doesn't exist yet. 
for us, and uh, I only run six grade three, so she's very important to have as a four of. Um, and yeah, stride fodder, stride deck, do the math. Four copies of Succubus of Avarice. So she is the darkness PG, and her skill is if you're in darkness, you can choose one of your rear guards and retire it, and then she bounces to your hand from your soul. So that means if you soul charge her by accident, uh, you can then get her back for next turn. Um, on top of that, she uh, is... The fact that she's just fetchable from your soul, which is where most of your cards are going anyway, is more of a boon than the unflipping PG. And also, we don't counterblast that's mu that much anyway. So, for her. Um, for grade zeros, we have four copies of Dark Knight of Nightmare Land. So, he's your Mardol clone. He's a crit trigger. Um, every trigger in this deck, aside from the heal triggers, and I'm, although that'll probably be fixed with Fighters Collection 2017, but every trigger does something to put a card in your soul. So he's very important to have as like a, you know, Mardol clone. Um, and he's a crit trigger, which is nice. Uh, next up is four copies of Monochrome Cat of Nightmare Land. I think this is arguably the most important one. So his skill is act, you can put it back in deck, soul charge, if you have six or more after that, you unflip a damage. Then if you have ten or more, you draw a card. So she, it's like a reverse flying librarian, kind of. Um, the important thing is that because it puts itself back constantly, as your deck gets thinner, it does like something akin to a refros loop, except a lot less consistent. Um, it's really fun if you have Tragic Claw there, because you can call behind Tragic Claw, get a soul charge from the claw, and then put her back. And then if you draw her again, you can call behind Tragic Claw, soul charge again. It's just a really good card. It's going to be running DI decks for a long time, I think. Um, four copies of Hysteric Shirley. So she's a draw trigger. You can shove her in soul and soul charge a card. Um, this is really good for early game. I did try eight crit four stand, and I found that not only taking this as damage is very nice because the draw power is a little limited, but uh, being able to just kind of soul charge out of nowhere and just you know get it kick started is really nice. Um, four copies of Alice of Nightmare Land. I, I've been looking for the cat for a while and I couldn't find it, so I have her instead. She's a nice looking heal trigger. Um, four copies of Enigmatic Assassin. So this is what makes the deck good. Yeah, so uh, her skill is Darkness. Uh, at the beginning of your attack step, so attack step is before you boost or anything like that. Uh, you can pull her out of soul, and then if you have 10 or more cards after doing that, uh, she gets plus 5,000. Then if you have 15 or more cards when she's called out, she gets another plus 15,000. So because you can pull her out and boost with her, it means your uh, Guild of Rai is hitting for 56. Yeah, pretty scary. Um, another thing you can do is on the Demigog turn, wherein Demigog gets the uh, continuous skill. If you have a soul full of these, you get like seven attacks for, you know, anywhere between the 20k and 40k range just by herself. So uh, she's incredibly useful and um, for such a cheesy deck, like, this is where most of the cheese comes from. Um, my starter is uh, Werefelder or Donez, the Werebat. So his skill is GB1, you can uh, counterblast one, put him in soul, soul charge two. Then if you have six or more cards in soul, you draw a card. So this is basically just a Soul Charge 3, draw 1. Pretty nice. Um, you can run Enigmatic as your starter if you want, but having a booster allows you to rush early, and uh, this is a very aggressive deck, so I, I highly recommend him as your starter. Um, you can also do, if you want, for the for the sake of, like, I need to get Enigmatic in there, you can run Greedy Hand, which is Counter Blast, put him and something from deck in Soul, and it's not GB restricted. But I like him because it gives you cards in hand. Um, for my stride deck, we have, starting off, one uh, Soulless Demagogue. So his skill is, uh, during your turn, every time a card is put in soul, he gets red text, your front row gets plus 1,000. So that stacks. So every time you soul charge, your front row gets plus 1k. And because the skill goes to him, that means anything that's called out subsequently also gets that power boost. So this is what makes the deck so crazy on first stride. Um, and, it, it, like, a lot of people just kind of ignored it for a long time, and admittedly me too. Um, 
he, you don't really need to run more than one because oftentimes you're not going to have the crazy soul charge engine you did after first stride. After that, it's going to slow down a bit, but it's, it's really good. Uh, four copies of Wings of Annihilation, Blade Wing Tybalt. So this prevents you from dying. His skill is when you stride him, you put your drop zone back in your deck if you have a Blade Wing Heart, which you will, because it's all a grade threes or Blade Wings. Um, and then if you have 15 or more cards in soul, your fr uh, he gets skill, your front row rear guards get plus one to 10k. So it works a little bit like Demigog. But the main thing is that after you do, if, uh, if you have less than 15, after you put your uh, drop zone back, you soul charge five. Um, so this basically is just you dirtling around with Sullivan's like protection skill, putting triggers back and then just putting those back in deck. Um, I find him incredibly useful. You can probably drop it to three if you're, uh, I know he's like 10 bucks now. You, you can probably drop it to three if you're that desperate, but don't go lower than two, I implore you. Um, yeah. Two copies of One Steeped in Sin, Sharhat. So his skill is Darkness, GB2. Uh, Counterblast one, and you put all of your rear guards in your soul. Then, uh, hang on. So put all of the rear guards in the soul, he gets plus 10k. If it's 10 or more after you do that, you retire all of your opponent's rear guards. And then if it's 15 or more after doing that, if uh, your opponent can't guard with Sentinels. So uh, the important thing is that uh, this can help you put Enigmatics back in soul, um, and then you can use them again. You can also uh, use this to, like a well-timed board wipe can fuck up a lot of decks, like Aqua Force, uh, some Royal Paladin variants, Neo Nectar. This thing is pretty crazy. Um, the Guard Restrict is also very nice for Dr. Regulars, so good on him. Four copies of Gilderai. Yeah, this probably is not going to change for a long time, so you, uh, once per turn, flip up a copy of him. He gets, uh, plus 10k, and then if you have, uh, six or more in soul... Ah, fuck it. Can never remember it. Okay, so if it's 10 or more, it gets plus 10k, and then if it's 15 or more, uh, he gets glory still. And then if it's two or if it's if he's at GB three after you flip that he gets a crit. So this thing is usually, you know, thirty six with a crit, no grade ones or higher. This is your finisher nine times out of ten. And thank God for the reprint pack because otherwise this would still be a pain in the butt to get a hold of. Um, my G guards are two copies of False Dark Wings. So when you guard with her, you soul charge two, and then if you have six or more in soul. Your uh, she gets plus 5k shield. So the important thing is that this can help you stave off Sullivan going below 15 soul. Um, oftentimes you'll be very far above six soul for her skill to go off. Um, so yeah, so you guard with her. Oh look, I'm at 41, three to pass with just one card. Pretty pretty crazy. Um, two copies of Nighttime Gentleman Saint Germain. So when you guard with him, if you have 10 or more in soul, you're, uh, he gets plus 10k shield. And then if you have 15 or more in soul, you can pick any number of units on your field and give them resist. Um, so the, the resist thing is just kind of a cherry on top. I don't really use it often, and when I do, it's just like, all right, you you give him resist, just fuck it. <laughs> so the plus 10k shield for free, basically, is the reason you run him. And then also one copy of a Gleam. Um, I know Dark Regulars inherently looks like it has a deck out problem, but sometimes there are things in my hand I don't want, and sometimes uh, soul charging is stupid, and sometimes Saint Germain is overkill. So, him. I don't really need to run Dismal because a lot of my rear guards don't matter. So, yeah, that's the, the G deck. Also, no Seabreeze because everything except Librarian and the starter is not GB1. So, you can just do stuff anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, that was the, the deck if you want to. You know, if if you have any uh, complaints or grievances, comment below. Rate, comment, subscribe. We'll see you next time.